I had a great time working with Deborah. Working on Charlene and Jason's house was actually the first time we'd worked together. We have a great collaboration and we've developed a really interesting way that we work together to blend the architectural design and the interior design. The way that the team was structured, it actually came from Charlene, the homeowner herself. It was kind of a side intention of hers to create a women-led design team. So it started with Gail Prosser of Women Who Build Stuff. I was brought on as an architectural designer. Sarah, my colleague, was brought in for the interiors. And then I brought in my structural engineer, Zoe Hanneman, to contribute to the project as well. And it's, it's been a great, great experience. The front of the facade really was in poor condition. There was stucco on top of kind of crumbling brick and a concrete porch with rusting steel parts, a partial porch. My vision with the front facade of the house was to really see two worlds coming together. The kind of historical sense of a building like this, to respect where that's from, but also really bring in like a modern edge. So the first thing we wanted to do was enlarge it to get enough space for people to actually gather and then to have a full roof across the entire face of the building. The idea was to take the stucco off and it just exposed the original brick, but it was absolutely degraded and crumbling and it was impossible to do that because it's not a brick veneer, it's solid, you know, triple wide brick. There was no way of replacing. So we did a scratch coat on the stucco and it's actually, you know, a brick tile that has corner pieces and has soldier course above the windows. It's a brick facade, but it's, it's really a tile, so it's indiscernible. So it's really, we're tying together old and new to kind of respect where the home came from, but also to bring it to, to where we are now. While they were at it, they knew the house needed an upgrade. Because they had had three kids in quick, twins actually, in, the, in quick succession, they didn't have a chance to really update the home in a way that suited them really well. So it was only once they had a design team on board that they started to think about the whole package. The main wish list for this project was really to open up the main floor and modernize the space so that it works really well for a family of five. They wanted a space that they could all be together, but also have some separation when they needed to. The original main floor was very separate spaces. It had a narrow hallway beside the stairs. The entrance was full of a lot of coats and boots and shoes. We left the walls intact for the living room so that you still get the vestibule feel and you don't see everything from the kitchen and the living room. We decided to keep a little bit of consistency and we ran hardwood throughout most of the main floor, but we thought for durability and for moisture reasons to add some tile at the front in a checkerboard pattern. The living room was quite cramped when we started this project. There was a fireplace that wasn't functioning and some built-ins on either side, but it felt quite heavy. We added a gas fireplace insert and did a clean marble mosaic surround to keep things feeling contemporary, but with a classic pattern. We also painted the room a nice bright color so it felt nice and light and added lots of new furnishings with various colors. The furnishings in the living room are set up so that it's a gathering space for the adults. There's no TV, it's more of a lounge space, and we kept the original doors that pocketed between the living room and dining room so that they can still close the area off if they need a little extra quiet. One of the major items on the client's wish list was to have a much more functional kitchen. We were able to get much more counter space and storage by opening up the space between the dining room and the kitchen and creating an open plan. In a traditional home like this, there's walls everywhere. You got walls, walls, doors, hallways. It's hard to see people. It's hard to see kids when they're in the house playing, doing homework and that sort of thing. So most people want to open up traditional homes, but we struck a balance in this situation. On the stairs is a kind of a, a layered screening to let light in, to let view in, to be able to connect with everyone in the space without really being on top of each other. Even the screen behind us um, has two functions, right? Yes, we want to open it up, but you do kind of want to hide dirty dishes and you, you know, want to be at a table with friends without having to kind of hide the mess of the kitchen. So it, it accomplishes those two things together. It's just an interesting place to keep your cookbooks, add some plants, keep the space feeling open, but not too large and uninviting. It sort of creates two designated areas. 
For the kitchen cabinets, we went with a soft gray on the perimeter and we paired it with a wood look laminate on the island. And we did that so that when the kids were running around this island, it was really, really durable. And when they would hit it or run into it, it was going to last the test of time. <laughs> We also paired that laminate on the hood detail, which balances the two materials a little bit throughout the space. And on the backsplash, we decided to add a little bit of a geometric blue, again, to add some color in so that it wasn't totally monochromatic. Although the kitchen footprint itself didn't change tremendously, with the wall out and the new layout, we were able to really maximize space by going floor to ceiling on all of the cabinetry and with the new layout with the island. The dining room remained in the same location, but with the hallway wall removed, it's a much larger space. We also planned for the end of the island to protrude past the divider on the dining room side, so it acts a bit like a sideboard for serving, and there's storage below on that side for placemats, candlesticks, things that you might have in your dining room. We also added a bench under the window to create more storage underneath and also to make use of that space. We couldn't place any furniture because the window was a bit lower, so we decided to make it a cozy place that you could sit after dinner or while your mom's cooking. It also functions as extra seating if you're having a really large gathering where you can move the table over and add a temporary table in to really create more seating for bigger holidays and things like that. The back addition originally was a small laundry room with an exit to the backyard and a half powder room, meaning there was no sink. So we decided to move the laundry room downstairs so that anybody going to the backyard wouldn't have to see all of the laundry. We were able to create a bit of a mudroom space. So we created some custom millwork with cubbies for shoes and boots and closet space for hanging coats and also a little floating bench towards the sliding door so that you can sit down and put your shoes on. We carried the terrazzo tile into the bathroom we also inserted a hexagon tile into the center, which helps with cleaning and maintenance. The countertop slides right into the windowsill, and we floated a mirror in front of the window to create a little bit of privacy and also let the light shine in from behind. Working with this team was such a positive and fun experience uh, that we've actually worked together on several projects since then. It's really sparked some great relationships and friendships. And we've really grown a relationship with the homeowners themselves. We've been over quite a few times just to have some drinks and hang out in their new space.